it's 55 degrees right now. And the high is supposed to be in the 80s, according to the weather report on this morning's news on KI TV. Which I think is NBC's NBC News here in Austin, Texas. I um I just was was thinking about uh, a couple of things when it came to how Chris Perillo handled the Microsoft Surface review. Now uh, I will say this real quick: it's his channel. He can do whatever the hell he wants to his own YouTube account. You know, he has. Uh, out of his own money, bought the Surface. Out of his own money, is using his own equipment to do reviews on different stuff that he's interested in. Now, I'm not interested in any of the Lego, the garbage patch stuff that he's talking about. I'm not into that stuff. So I, you know, kind of ignore those segments of the vlogs and reviews that he does that, you know, that is not of interest to me. But I do watch all the tech reviews, including the Apple stuff. And even though I'm not an Apple fan, I still watch reviews on Apple products on people's vlogs, on people's YouTube videos. Because I am interested in knowing what others are thinking about that particular technology. Because there's nothing wrong with the iPad. There's nothing wrong with the iPhone. I mean, those are great devices. I can't say anything bad about iPad and iPhone. I just don't like it for myself. You know? So, I, um, I got a little teed off at Chris a little bit just because he bought the Surface he didn't have such a great experience with it. It wasn't the best experience. But it seemed like he overly tried to explain why it wasn't. I mean, and he overdid it. It's like, okay, when the iPhone came out and it had an issue with maps and a few other features, iPhone 5, I mean, he didn't really touch on that. He only touched on the things that was great. But when he was discussing the surface, when he was talking about surface, he had to do like what three, four, five videos, about five different videos, and a mention of one of his vlogs on how he doesn't like the experience and how he's going to return it. You know, he had a, a bad experience with surface, and he just publicized it a thousand, a uh, hundred times over, as if. He is, it just seemed like he was really harping down on that, more so than I've seen him do on any other device. What, um, but it's not just Chris that I'm mad at, too. It's everybody else. No one out there, and I even wrote Microsoft about this. I even spoke to a Microsoft representative about this. No one has ever said anything about Microsoft Enterprise connectivity with on-premise, Exchange, SharePoint, and Link, and Communicator, and or with Office 365. I mean, um, they, Microsoft seems to want to concentrate on the consumer market, which is fine because that's what they're, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to attack that consumer market. Granted, they got the Xbox down pat. Xbox is way more popular than um, Nintendo and and uh, uh, Sony, right? So they got the Xbox. They got the delivery room covered. That part is done. But what they're trying to do is hit the consumer market as far as 
mobile phones and computers because right now, as we speak, Apple is killing the market with tablets and Google is killing the market with smartphones. And those are consumer-based devices, even though it can be used for business, right? Now, my point is, is that, yes, concentrate on consumer. You got to do that because that's what they're trying to do anyway. But they're not appeasing or trying to uh, sell to the business market either. People knew that BlackBerry is a business phone. People knew that. People also knew that the second most popular phone in the market just a few years ago before iPhone ever came out was Windows Mobile and Palm. Especially when Palm and Windows Mobile got together, they it was considered a business phone. And mostly business users uh, got those phones. But what happened with BlackBerry and Windows Mobile is that a lot of those business people bought iPhones because they wanted an iPhone too. So a lot of times, and this is what you saw a lot, is that the company they worked for issued them a BlackBerry and they also had an iPhone. This is um, probably during the iPhone 2 and 3, 3 uh, versions. So you had a lot of people who um, still had a BlackBerry because their job offered it, but they didn't buy it themselves. You didn't see a whole lot of people go out and buy a BlackBerry. That was mostly corporate businesses. Now, because Exchange works great with other phones, Exchange works uh, really well in iPhone. It does okay in Android. I am not... I'm not a big fan of Exchange on Android. Um, it doesn't really work that well, to tell you the truth. And so, whether you are working in those environments on a, on a BlackBerry, it, that's what it worked, it, that's what it did very well. Windows Mobile did very well as well, because, of course, Microsoft product works great on Microsoft products. That's just the way it's going to be, that's just the way it is, and that's the way, you know, it's always going to be. But, when Windows Phone, okay, with Windows Phone, I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm sorry I was crossing the street, so my mind was kind of taken away from this conversation here. With Windows Phone, and uh, with the Windows 8, no one has really talked about Enterprise. Like, how does Office 65 work with Windows 8? Now, I do have an idea how Office 65 works with the Office Hub, pretty much seamlessly. If you have an Office 65 account, email address, you just, all you got to do is put in your email address and password, then your email, your calendar, all your tasks, and your documents in the SharePoint site will automatically sync up to your phone. Or you have access to it on your phone, which is great. That's exactly what I want. Plus, I have a 25 gig SkyDrive account, so I'll just put in my uh, Microsoft ID, blah, blah, there it is. Okay. So I got the best of both worlds on one phone, right? But here's, here's the problem is that Microsoft is not, I mean, I haven't seen it, at least. I mean, I, I haven't seen it. I go to several different blogs, uh, business websites, corporate uh, websites. And I'm talking about corporate trade magazines, okay? Now, back in the days, I used to read, literally, purchase, like Forbes and Business Insights. You know, that was another magazine, Business Insights. I used to purchase those magazines, CIO magazine. But now I just go to the website. And the only thing you see on there when it comes to Microsoft is stuff like Microsoft Hyper-V, you know, server, um, uh, Windows Azure, but nothing about how Windows 8 works great in Enterprise. Nothing about how Windows Phone works great in Enterprise. Yes, there were announcements, but does the average person look at the announcements? 
do, does an average person, do, uh, do they want to sit in front of a computer for 90 minutes and watch the entire announcement? No, they don't. So they really don't know if Windows Phone is a business phone. They really don't know if a Windows Phone will work great with their local infrastructure. In fact, works better. In my opinion, sure, iPhone has uh, applications that you can buy or download from the App Store where you can open up uh, uh, Microsoft Office documents, work on it, and save it. Yes, that's available. Eventually, Office 2013 will be available for iPad. Very true. Okay. So I give you that. That and that's going that's going to happen sometime next year for iPad. I'm sure there are some beta testers out there that actually are working in that environment right as we speak. So there's no problem there, right? My problem is is that there's a whole lot of uh, business people who could benefit from using a Windows phone in their enterprise environment a lot better than any other phone can iPhone, yes, is probably the, in my opinion, <laughs> second best phone for enterprise. Android is not, in my opinion, a good phone for a Microsoft-based enterprise. Now, if you're using Google Apps for your company, you have Google Apps for businesses, then yes, you know, deploy Android left and right. You know, that'll work just fine. Okay? But I'm talking about uh, Microsoft Enterprises, Enterprise Software. Windows Phone is the best phone for it. Because even if you're using on premise Exchange and SharePoint, you can still connect a Windows Phone to that network locally and externally if you have the external proxies set up and your uh, teammates can access your documents right off the SharePoint site without any problems and if you have Office 365 it's, just, it's really too damn easy because in the account setup manager you don't even have to go to the office hub to do this all you got to do is put in your Office 365 email address and password hit save Voila, there's your emails, your calendars, your uh, uh, task, your, uh, I don't know, what, what else is there? Uh, contacts, yeah, that's the main, main thing, contacts. All that stuff is synchronized. Then, all of a sudden, it says, oh, yeah, your office stuff is set up, too. You go to the Office Hub, click on Office 65, and there are all of your documents from your Office 65 account. Easy as pie and you don't have to do any additional things. Windows Phone does this. No other phone does this. If you're so... A problem, I mean, I, I got a guy at work who is sold on Windows Phone. He is sold on it. And, and basically, a week, about a week ago, or a week, or two weeks ago, a company called Catapult Systems did a big presentation about Windows 8 to a, a couple of businesses here. And Catapult, as far as I know, is one of the uh, is the partner um, is the Microsoft partner that Whole Foods contract with to take care of certain things. You know that when it comes to Microsoft. And so they went to a presentation about Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. And they were like sold on Windows Phone, and they were also sold on Windows 8. And uh, I mentioned the guy's first name. His name is Lee. I'm just going to mention his first name. Lee is sold, and he's not really sold on Microsoft Surface per se, RT, but he is sold on a Windows 8 tablet. Whether it's going to be the Microsoft Surface Windows 8 Pro. Or and or if it's a different manufacturer, but he sold on Windows 8, and he is really sold on Windows Phone. But the problem is, 
is that his first iPhone was iPhone 2. Now, go figure. How in, I mean, okay. He told me, he told me all the phones he's had in the past. He's had the iPhone 2, upgraded to iPhone 3G, broke it, bought the iPhone 3GS, then turned around and bought the iPhone 4S, and that's what he has now is the iPhone 4S. He hasn't bought the iPhone 5 because when he went to that presentation, he was like, I am so, I'm getting a Windows phone, but um, I may go with the Galaxy X3. So he's kind of torn between both. He's like, I love the way Windows phone is. I mean, I, that presentation was awesome. And this is what I told him. I said, if you have a lot of apps and your ec ecosystem is very strong with Apple, you, you're going to be missing a lot of apps, then stick with iPhone. I told him the truth. I'm a Windows phone fan to the hill, and, but I don't knock other people's phones. I told him, I said, if you're, if you're heavily invested in Windows phone apps, I mean, I'm sorry, iPhone apps, stick with iPhone. If you're concerned about music and videos, that you can import. All you got to do is turn on your iTunes, and then window, uh, soon, or I guess it's going to be called Xbox uh, Live Program or something. I, I don't have the full details on that. It's going to be able to synchronize your music from your iPhone. But my bus is here. Peace.